All right, this is a pretty typical found in the wild Parker 51 Aerometric. Uh, it's kind of dirty. I haven't done anything to it. Um, it could definitely be cleaned up a lot, but functionally, let's have a look at it. This is the way a lot of these are sold. Just people will say, oh, look, it's filling up. Well, yeah, the sack is still soft. You can see bubbles are coming out each time. Well, Looks like somebody rinsed it out at some point, so. All right, so a lot of people would just, uh, you know, clean it up, a lot of dealers would just clean it up, uh, polish it, work out a lot of the scratches, um, and then, you know, sell it along as being all clean and ready to go. Uh, let's see what's inside, though. All right, let's uh, give it a little heat with the heat gun. Should be enough, and then wiggle off. That gives us enough to wiggle off the holder. We'll turn off this. This is distracting. Maybe give it a little bit of a zoom in here, and here we go. Wiggle it off. All right. Well, let's see what's inside here. All right. Let's see what the condition is here. Okay, already we can see this isn't great. See, I can squeeze this. That nipple is soft. I can also feel here, there's something hard back in there. That's not a good sign. Here, the crunch. Yeah. Crunch, crunch, crunch. That's hard. It's like there's a little pee in there. Uh, let's see if I can get it off with my nail. Sometimes that can be, yeah, it, it's actually coming off. It's coming off there. Comes off. Okay. So, uh, as you can see, <laughs> that sack nipple is not in good shape. And, well, I'll have to get a little, little better look. I think we actually have a sound, a sound breather tube. We'll have to double check. Oh, it feels like there may be some corrosion up there, too. Let's have a closer look there. Okay, I've put this in the ultrasonic and uh, actually heated it up a bit. I cheated, skipped over a few steps, which are kind of hard to video close up and also pay attention at the same time. Sorry about that. I need a, I need an assistant videographer. Okay, anyway, let's open it up and see what's inside. Okay, this is an O-ring. Yeah, see how grotty that is? Oh, that's not pretty. That's really not pretty. Look how dirty that is still. You know, that's after, uh, you know, se several minutes in the ultrasonic. Um, it's still, and, you know, flushing it with the bulb as well. That's still far from clean. So let's pull that. Uh, still not coming out. Into, uh, look at that. It's messy. Ah, okay. You know, be gentle here. These fins are delicate. Okay, now we go here. Let's have a good look. Yeah. I'm going to pop this in the ultrasonic one more time. And uh, we'll have a, it'll be a little handier to clean, or at least cleaner, cleaner to handle. Sorry about that. Um, before we put it in there, let's have one really good icky close up. There we go. I mean, that's really nasty, isn't it? Ugh. Look at all that. Look at all that stuff. Gotta wash my hands after this. All right, and everything's gone through the uh, ultrasonic a few times already. And then, you know, I've also had to work on it with a uh, toothbrush. Uh, ultrasonic alone isn't enough. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, and then look at this breather tube. It's clogged. Ah, you know, I've got this piece of music wire in here. Okay, I can push it in here. Yeah, so this, you know... Even with all those bubbles, this was not filling properly, and look at all that nasty goo in there. Okay. Okay, well, we're going to have to do this a few more times, uh, maybe even use a drill bit. Um, I don't need to show you all that. And then multiple times through the ultrasonic. Uh, yuck, yuck, yuck. You can hear the uh, ultrasonic running in the background, but this will show you that 
even with the ultrasonic, we're going to need some scrubbing. I mean, look at this nib. It's really a mess. Okay, so the nib's a lot better after a bit of uh, scrubbing, vigorous scrubbing with brushes. Uh, but now I would also go here and go through and clean out that slit as well. And I'm going to do it on the other side as well. This is 0.1 micron diamond coated nib smoothing paper, which I've been using, which uh, does a little bit of polishing, but doesn't really take anything off. All right, we're finally getting there from the standpoint of cleanliness, but um, we still have this big issue here. Uh, take a look, and this is this is a mess. The, it's actually better than some. Uh, the softened nipple. Uh, you know, we still could, if we were not going to be too scrupulous, we could just glue on a new sack. Uh, but that's not the way we do things here. So, um, we're going to just chop off the end and uh, onto the lathe, and uh, we're going to replace the nipple. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do a video of that. I might just actually cut to, cut to the chase here. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm not really set up for uh, taking videos at the lathe, but... Uh, this only took a few minutes to do, and uh, just bored out the back end. We'll cut off the back end, bored it out slightly, and put in a new piece of acrylic, grooved it. Uh, this is going to last as long as the pen will. Uh, it, acrylic doesn't soften in contact with uh, PVC, so no worries there. No further uh, issues as far as uh, uh, you know, softening of and plasticizer migration. So that's the way to do it properly. All right, here we go. Uh, everything's all stuck together. Uh, shellacked in place, all good to go. Uh, really? No, that's looking pretty good. So we can just push that together. And there we have it. I still need to clean up the barrel and the cap. It's kind of grotty, but uh, the functional part of the pen is all ready to go now. Properly done. Okay, let's wrap up with a quick recap. The main lesson here is that a 51 can seem to be in working condition even though there are all sorts of hidden problems. When those of us who work on pens hear someone complaining that vintage 51s can be bulky and troublesome, we can be pretty certain that that someone has been using pens that haven't been properly serviced. What we found inside the pen in the video is unfortunately pretty typical, more the rule than the exception. We were lucky that the breather tube was still intact, though the video really doesn't show quite how much work it took to get it unclogged. Uh, that was no fun. Since we didn't get to see a damaged breather tube during the repair, here are some that came out of other 51s. The corrosion of the silver can be dramatic. It's not just the tube not functioning, it's also all the debris. That's another cause of a 51 not performing well, even though it seems to fill okay. Anyone who regularly works on 51 should have a stock of spare breather tubes on hand. Newly made tubes in stainless steel are readily available and not expensive, but replacing a corroded tube does take time and some skill, and not every seller is above cutting a few corners. This is especially the case when dealing with softened sack nipples. This afflicts a lot of 1950s era metrics. The earliest production used an acrylic connector, but Parker soon switched to molded styrene, which over time can absorb the plasticizers in the transparent sacks. The softening is irreversible, so you'll either have to come up with a spare connector or replace the sack nipple. If you have a lathe and some practice, replacement can be very quick. Otherwise, it can be a real obstacle. So it's understandable, if not excusable, that some repairmen avoid dealing with the sack nipple entirely. It can be done. Instead of pulling off the metal sack housing, you remove the hood and take out the nib, feed, and collector assembly. Clean them off and replace them, 
leaving the sack nipple safely hidden under the sack housing throughout the whole operation. The only thing is, if you avoid dealing with the sack nipple, you also can't replace the sack. There was a decent excuse for not replacing an old stained 51 sack in years past. Not everyone had access to transparent replacement sacks back then. Now it's another matter. New repro sacks are cheap and readily available. So I look with some suspicion on any 51 that has supposedly been serviced, but which still has its old darkened original sack. For me, that's really a red flag. No new sack basically means some very large corners have been cut. Sure, I'll keep an original sack in a new old stock pen that's never been filled, but otherwise, it's a new replacement sack every time.